Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, with a very quick and easy fun card for you. And we are going to make this sparkly fun card using, um, you can use Twinkling H2Os, you can use watercolor, you can add some perlex in with that. If that's what you have, you could use even thin down um, India inks or acrylic paints. It's whatever you have, whatever you can make nice and juicy for, um, you know, for your stamping in your background. So I want you to find some sort of water media. Really, you can use what you have. Um, so I fell in love with these Twinkling H2Os from Oriental Trading Company, uh, but they are sold out. And I don't know if they're gonna get any more. And then I was in Hobby Lobby the other day and they had this set on clearance. Um, it was 12 colors for $15.59, so that was a heck of a deal, so I grabbed them because I didn't have any of these colors in the set I got from Oriental Training. So I'm just hoping that they're not going out, that they're not going to stop making them. That actually happened in the past with the Twinkling H2Os, but the, the fans and customers got so excited, got so upset that they discontinued them, that Luminart brought them back. So, um, so I'm hoping they're still going to be around, but you can use watercolors, inks, um, you know, Perlex mixed with your watercolors, whatever you want for this tutorial. Um, and we're going to make a little matching envelope to go with it so I love to do that whenever I have the chance we're going to use a moldy oldie supply um, and I'll tell you what you can use if you don't have this but we're gonna I, I just had a scrap of watercolor paper um, it was from a card that didn't turn out very well and so I used the back side for that one and this is the other half of that paper and I'm gonna use a rub-on and if you were scrapbooking or making cards about I don't know ten years ago you probably have a stash of these and sometimes they don't age very well and sometimes they're fine so what you want to do when you get a, a sheet of rub-ons is cut out the one that you want and make sure you cut the backing paper too you have to keep them with the backing paper or they'll, they might transfer onto your packaging or however you're storing them and get ruined and then what you do is you take the backing off now, if you don't have um, rub-ons, get clear embossing powder and a nice bold stamp and just stamp a sentiment on there. So this is going to be white on white. It's going to act as a resist. So what I've done is just centered this on the bottom and then um, taking a popsicle stick and I hope I might need to put something hard underneath my... Oh, you know what? Do I have this upside down? No, I have it right side up. I was thinking, oh my gosh, well, yeah, I have it upside down, but sometimes I, you know, I have it... I have it right set up for you, that's what I'm tending to be, and then it's like, wait a minute, do I have it right set up for me, or do I have it right set up for them? It's got to be right set up for them. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's like, um, I don't know. <laughs> it's very bizarre. It's, uh, I feel like I'm left-handed or doing everything backwards half the time here. Um, sometimes it gets to be a challenge to do things right side up, because I'm so used to doing it upside down. Now, I don't know if you can see that or not. I don't want to really lift it up yet until I have it all transferred, but I could tell. I could just kind of see it looks different where I rubbed it down. These, um, let me see what brand these were, because they're actually, they've lasted really well. Shoot, it doesn't say on there. I think they're um, Royal or Plaid brand. I'm not sure. They, they came out a long time ago, and I'm sure they're discontinued, but you could probably still find rub-ons. They were like the most popular product, and then I was hoarding them because I was like, oh, I gotta save it for a special thing, and the special thing never came, and then I had all these rub-ons in my drawer, and it's like, well, what the heck am I gonna do with those? All right, so once you've got it all transferred, you wanna just kinda do a little sneaky peek underneath and see if, if everything has transferred. Like a part of that R that didn't. Older rub-ons, um, and if you have rub-ons, they are probably older because I don't see them around very much. They, um, they can crack, and sometimes you don't see it until you've put it on your project. So it doesn't matter if they've cracked, you just want to make sure you get it all transferred down in one piece. All right, and then what you want to do is take the backing paper, go right on top and just kind of rub it. And this is going to burnish it down so it doesn't lift up when we paint over it. All right, now the next thing we're going to do is just douse our paper. Oh, and whenever you're using these uh, Twinkling H2Os, you want to spray them with water before you start, like about five minutes before you start, and then give it another spray about one minute before you're about to start to work with them to make sure they're nice and juicy. My paper will buckle, no biggie. It's going to go flat as soon as I dry it with my heat gun or hair dryer. Um, and I'm just using a watercolor brush, and I'm going to just put some of this nice juicy color in there. Now look at the magic. See, you can see my rub-on design when I start painting over it with color. Um, and this will work with watercolor or India ink or thin down acrylic paint. So don't feel like, well, I never got them and they're probably discontinued and now I can never do this fabulous technique that Lindsay's showing me. Not the case at all. You can do this with watercolors, even your kids, you know, Crayola watercolors, if, if that's what you have. You know, don't let your lack of resources limit your creativity. There's always a way. If you want to make it happen, you will find a way. You will find something you can substitute. You can use food coloring, for goodness sake. So please, please, if this is a technique you want to try, find something to try it with. You can get food coloring at the dollar store, for goodness sake. You know, you can totally do this. 
All right. I think I want a little bit more intense of color, intense pink in there. So I'm just going to kind of drizzle that in. And if I want my colors to blend more, I can spray it with water or I can leave it the way it is. It's, you know, personal preference. I'm going to the edge because I cut my watercolor paper with deckle edge scissors and I want, um, I want that deckle edge to show up against my white, my plain old white cheapo, you know, from the craft store card base. Um, that I like to buy so much because they're so convenient because you get an envelope too. All right, I'm gonna set that aside to dry. Actually, I'm gonna dry it with my hair gun, with my hair gun, <laughs> oh boy, with my heat gun in a minute. But I'm just gonna set that aside for right now. And um, and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do the envelope. Light that up a little bit there. My, uh, my little lovely mat that I love to work on. Um, it's great for wiping up spills. However, it does not enjoy the heat gun. I've like melted the plastic coating. Uh, a couple of places, which I didn't think it was possible because it's a Teflon coating, but yeah, now I know it is possible. Anything's possible, right, folks? All right, I'm going to use a little bit of this, um, the uh, H2O's watercolor as a stamp, as a uh, ink. So I'm just painting it on my rubber stamp with my paintbrush. And this will not give me a perfect impression, but I'm okay with that. Um, and I'm just going to stamp it a couple times. And then I'm going to load it up with some purple. I'm wa I rinse off my brush, but I don't r rinse off the stamp. I try, you know, if I'm going back in the pot of color, I would rinse my brush off. All right, and then just throw a little bit more in here. There, it's kind of pretty. And then for a little extra wow, what I'm going to do is take a toothbrush and my um, blue there. It doesn't, you don't need a lot. I'm actually going to turn this a little bit so I'm kind of going across to where I've stamped. I'm just going to spray that. There, and now I'll just set that aside to dry. So it's kind of like using a mist except I didn't have to bother getting out my spray inks. So what I'm going to do now, I am going to dry my background with my heat gun and then we're going to finish up this card. But I'm going to pause it so you don't have to watch that. All right, my paper is nice and dry and I'm going to do some more stamping just along the top. Um, because I did it to the envelope, so it'll be nice to kind of do it to the, uh, to the top of the thing as well. And I'm just going to put this pretty vine in there. I think I need more that didn't really stamp that well, but it's all right. I'm not looking for a perfect impression here. I'm just looking to get a little bit of, uh, a little bit of interest on my plain background. This is going to shim, look how, look how shimmery it is, isn't that? Can you tell, can you tell the shimmery that is? It's really pretty. This would actually be kind of fun to do this on black paper too, I think. And I think I'll also try this. I have this other little matching stamp here. I think I'll do that in purple. Ooh, look at that. That's really a good amount of ink on it. There we go. Hook any a little bit more to kind of mask that. Maybe I'm getting a little out of hand with my stamping, but oh well. You always want the, those extra birthday cards on hand too. You know, it's like. You uh, you see on Facebook, oh my gosh, somebody's had a birthday. I really got to send them a card. Well, you know, you got one already made here. So and that works out pretty well. All right. So I'm going to dry this and we'll be back to finish this whole card up. All right. This is dry and I have my uh, card base all ready to go. I put some adhesive on it already. And I'm just going to center that down there and press it. Actually, you know what? Maybe I'll use that backing paper there. So if I do have any crud on my fingers, I'm not going to transfer it. There we go. Okay. And then I'm going to put, um, I'm just bending it back because my uh, paper got a little, uh, little bent. Look at that. It's so nice and shimmery shiny. Can you tell? I don't know if you can tell or not, but it's very pretty. All right. And then I'm going to use my glue gun to attach these little um, die cuts. Now I was trying out, after I got that platform from Cherry Lynn Designs, I was trying out some dies that I got on clearance at Big Lots. I got several die sets and they were $2 and they each had like, you know, five or six dies in the thing. And yeah, it was $2, but I have this theory about what's a bargain and what's not a bargain. Those $2 die sets, if I never use them, I wasted $2. But if I use them, then then they're a good a good deal. Just like, you know, you can spend $25 on a die. If you use it like 100 times, hell, let's say you got a heck of a deal. If you don't use it, then it's a bad deal. But, you know, and if you buy, oh my gosh, I just dropped it on there and that was hot glue. 
I gotta stop gabbing and pay attention. Um, I can rescue that. Ha, I think I can. Oh, look at that. I can rescue it. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I think how much you spend that, it's not centered at all, but whatever. <laughs> you know, it's a good deal if you're going to use it, is basically what I'm, what it's boiling down to. If you spend, you know, a dollar on a stamp and you never use it, you know, you just bought it to have it, and it's not, that's not really a good deal. But if you, you know, if you spend $30 on a stamp set that you use, you know, several times a week, you know, for a couple of years, and that's, that's a better deal than the $1 stamp you got because it was a bargain. So keep that in mind when you're, you know, when you see that deal, it's too good to pass up. Ask yourself, are you really going to use this or are you just buying it because maybe in case you might use it sometime? You know, it's the same thing like when you buy duplicates of things. That doesn't happen to me very often. It, it did recently happen to me with an embossing folder. And it's even an embossing folder I actually had used already, but I had forgot I had it and it, there was a great sale. It's like, well, I'm going to kick myself if I don't buy that at, you know, $1.50 or whatever it was on sale for. Um, but then I ended up already having it, so it wasn't a good deal at all. Okay, so what I'm going to do, because I'm a little off balance here, is I will put three little buttons there. Why don't I go see if I can find some? Found some. Speaking of bargains, this was a two for a dollar packages of buttons, and it would be a bad deal if I never used them, but look, I'm using them. So, you know, just something to keep in mind when you're shopping. Am I really going to use it, or do I just want it because it's a good deal, and I don't know when I'm ever going to find a deal like that again? And let's see, maybe... That green might pop nicely. Is that green in there? That's kind of a surprising color. Let me look in the monitor. Do I like the way that looks? Maybe put the pink one in the middle. Actually, is that the same color? I got the same color. It looks very pink here. Eh, I don't know. That might be too much. That might be too far off. Let's go with another little. That's kind of cute, I think. You know what? That's not really standing out enough. What if I do? Something like that. I like that better. All right, and you know, you can put string on it. I don't have time for that, so um, I'm just gonna hot glue these down. Hopefully a little bit better than I hot glued my first die cut there. Live by the sword, die by the sword. Live by the glue gun, die by the glue gun. <laughs> don't burn your hands off. People that have been watching my videos for years will uh, get that reference. All you newbies will be like, what is she talking about? And there, put that back in the holster. You feel lucky, punk? All right, so there we have a very quick and fun to make card that you can use with the stuff you have on hand. You don't have, if you don't have these, if you think, oh, I wish I had that die. Well, do you have a butterfly punch? Do you have a flower punch? Cut a square with deckled scissors and put a butterfly out of the middle or a flower or whatever. You can copy this idea with what you have. Don't feel like you have to go and buy everything I use. Um, so there's our cute envelope. My sponsors love it when you do that, but you know, I totally get it. You know, you use what you have on hand first and then if you know what you have won't cut it, then go ahead and get something new or if you think you're going to use it a lot. So there you go. We have a cute little envelope matching set. I hope you like this. I had a lot of fun making it for you today. And um, if you do like it, please like it. Give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and come on over and say how do you do on Facebook. We'd love to see what you're working on. Thank you so much for watching and as always, happy crafting.